Here's some more. Just can't believe this. What kind of person would do something like this? I know it's easier to mow them down with a chainsaw, but they're much healthier, prettier, and last longer. If people would just take the time to prune them correctly, why? What is it, Agent Morgan? Just, just a little, just a little sad. That's all. Why are you so upset? I'm just walking through town, and and it's just like this crate murder, crate murder everywhere. Oh yes. That horrible practice of lopping the top of crepe myrtle trees off so they become weakened over time. See, even you know about it, and you're from some far off land. Well, don't cry, Agent Morgan. We'll make you another video, and you and I together will stop crepe murder! First, assemble all the right tools. Pole pruners and extension pruners, a small pruning saw, some hand pruners. The fairy wand is optional. First of all, get rid of all the suckers from around the base of the tree. These are the little sapling looking things. They do a few negative things to the tree. One, they take extra energy. Two, they obstruct your view of that beautiful trunk. After you get rid of the suckers, step back and look for any diseased or dying limbs. These also are of no value, so try to get rid of those first hand. The next step is to remove any branches that are crossing. These rub against one another when the wind is blowing. The damage is a place where insects or disease could enter the tree and you want to eliminate as much of that as possible. Timber! With the suckers crossing branches, diseased and dying branches out of the way, now it's time to move on to the aesthetic cuts. Now is a good time to work with a partner. They can step back from this tree and see it as a whole and make recommendations on which branches need to go and which can stay. Crepe myrtles bloom on new wood, so it's okay to cut out a fair amount of the tree. However, you don't want to mess up the frame. Many pruners use the rule of thirds. You can prune away about a third of those small branches so that you can see the real shape and foundation of the tree. When pruning the tips out of the tree, about a third of that long branch is a good amount to prune to encourage lots of new growth that can have lots of blooms, yet still remain strong enough to stand up to our North Carolina storms and hurricanes. The best time to prune crepe myrtles in eastern North Carolina is mid-February through early March. By this time, most of the cold weather has already passed. When finishing up your cuts, it's good to inspect the tree from a number of different angles. This will show you if you've missed any obvious branches. Pruning is both an art and a science, so have fun. Try to make 45 degree angle cuts and leave just a little of the collar around each of the branches you cut to ensure that your tree heals quickly. Crepe myrtles are forgiving plants, so don't be intimidated. If you follow these steps, a fairy will not come prune your trees for you, but you won't be a crepe murderer either. You'll end up with a healthy, long-lived crepe myrtle that is a pleasure to observe.